Okay, so here we are in our week on chain 33 dashboard, and we're going to start with a bit of a view, a bit of a macro view on the capital flows. Now, the realized cap is one of the most important foundational metrics that we have in on-chain analysis. It really is the backbone. Many of the concepts that we use in on-chain analytics, um, particularly in that profit and loss regime, the backbone of it comes from the realized cap. So the realized cap, I and mean, we did cover this in a, uh, in a video about two weeks ago, we actually talked about mastering the realized cap. So I won't go over that uh, too closely. You'll find that in the description below. But uptrends in the realized cap here in orange tells us that capital is flowing into the market. Um, and, down, and downtrends and sideways means it's kind of static or, uh, or flowing out. Now we can break that down into different components. Here we're going to look at it in terms of the short-term holder component in the red and the long-term holder component in blue. Now on the right-hand side here, you can see these three traces. These are actually looking at the year-to-date, so 2023, change in the realized cap, which is the all market in orange, the short-term holder realized cap in red, and the long-term holder realized cap in blue. Now, it's kind of interesting here that what we're seeing is kind of an equal and opposite. As the realized cap for short-term holders climbs, we're seeing an equal and opposite outflow from the long-term holders. Now, remember that these, these are based on age brackets. Coins mature from short-term into long-term. So let's just think about whereabouts the long-term holder, that threshold actually is. In fact, we have a chart for it. That threshold is back here in February when we dip down to 19.8K. So just think about that. All of the coins that have recently become long-term holders were kind of in the start of this 2023 rally, January through to February. And we've kind of recently seen all the post FTX buyers migrate in. So think about that from that perspective. All of the coins that are migrating into long-term holder have a lower cost basis than where we currently are. So this is actually not a capital outflow from long-term holders. This is actually coins having a lower cost basis. And we can see this in the long-term holder cost basis. Look in the 2019 rally. After all of these coins were accumulated at the bottom, we saw a decline in the long-term holder realized price, as well as an uptick in the short-term holder realized price. Here we are in 2023. We've got a downtrend in the long-term holder. Coins are maturing in with a much lower cost basis. Long-term holders have a superior cost basis to where they've been. Previously, they all were top buyers. Now they're largely bottom buyers. At the same time, the short-term holder cost basis is chasing the price, right? We are seeing this kind of inflow of new demand. People literally follow the price all the way higher. So what we are starting to see, if you can recall back to the start of the year, probably about oh, March time, we released a couple of reports that really documented this concept where that long-term holder threshold at very, very particular point in the cycle, near cycle lows, is actually people who step in and buy the bottom. The short-term holder cohort are actually the most hardcore at the bottom because they're the ones who stepped in front of Bitcoin is dead for 10 years, right? That FTX has blown up and all the sentiment is as bad as it's ever been. People who stepped in at that point in time, they are initially classified as short-term holders. But in reality, you have to really have a higher conviction in Bitcoin to do that. So what we're actually seeing here is short-term holders starting to follow the price. Long-term holders who previously bought those lows, those short-term holders I just spoke about before, the hardcore folks, they are the ones now migrating into long-term holder status. So in many ways, this is actually reflecting the reversion back to our classic dynamic, which is that short-term holders are closely aligned with the speculators, the new demand, the more sensitive to price, and this here is showing us the long-term holders are in fact now the hodlers. So we've kind of left that very unique setting where at the bottom, short-term holders are actually the most hardcore. One of those interesting dynamics, but the right way to think about it, short-term holders, they bought within the last five months. What happened within the last five months? We've been in an uptrend and we've been up about 100% since the lows. So now we're starting to get that kind of excitement and new people coming in and things start to evolve along that axis.